And then you, Dante, and you let him back into our lives. Oh, you, you trying to put this shit on me? I'm saying it's on you as much as it is on me. Now, Ghost Season 3, Episode 5 looked very different, as we had one half of the team in Milan and the other in New York. In New York, the clues started to mount up that IG didn't kill Zeke. So after Moni discovered Lorenzo's fingerprints and did some more digging with the help of Tariq St. Patrick, we finally saw Lorenzo coming clean. But the move that Moni made is going to completely change the game for the Tahardas. And I don't think Moni thought her plan through to the end. And she's more focused on getting revenge for Zeke's death, rather than thinking about the entire chessboard. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the move that Moni made. But what happens when and if her kids find out it was Moni who put the hit out on Lorenzo? Inevitably, this will also cause a rift between the Castillos and the Tejadas, something that Evelyn wanted to avoid because she knew what game Monet was trying to play, but she didn't want to lose any of her boys, a decision that was taken out of her hands. So we're going to look at how Lorenzo's death will change Drew, Kane and Diana, and also whether or not Monet's actually got rid of that police report which they stole from Detective Whitman, because one scene we're yet to see is the Tejada family household being raided by law enforcement. So there is a lot to unpack when it comes to the Tahardas going forward in Power Book 2 Ghost Season 3. Now after Moni uncovered Lorenzo's fingerprints which were found at Mecca's hangar, she told Davis she was just jumping to conclusions, but Moni never reveals her hand that she's about to play. Lorenzo knew it and he even warned Kane. Over time, us as the audience, we've seen how Moni keeps her plans very close to her chest. For example, how she orchestrated the downfall of Detective Whitman with the help of Diana. With Theresa and Patrick being the only one she could trust, she asked him to find out the truth, and so he came back with the info that IG didn't kill Zeke. He was actually in DR the night Zeke of Zeke's death. So the clues were beginning to mount up, and it was after the conversation with Kane, where she realised it was actually Lorenzo this entire time. Now before we get to Lorenzo's confession, I think it's important for us to understand what happens between Kane and Monet when she realises that Kane knew the truth, but used it as leverage to get control over the Tahada organisation. We on the clock. Talk later. The fuck is that? They're moving fucking weird lately. So in episode 4, Monet noticed something wasn't quite right when Kane was calling the shots rather than Lorenzo, and Monet definitely isn't stupid. She's adding up all the clues and she'll continue to do so. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a similar scene to what we saw in season 2, where Monet confronted Kane about Ramirez and Jabari, except this time. Monet better choose her words carefully because she was the one who put the hit out on Lorenzo and Monet's not the only one who's good at connecting dots, so is Kane. When it comes to this Lorenzo confession, I think one of the questions we have to ask is, would things that would have been different if Lorenzo came clean when he realised he made a mistake? I personally don't think so. Zeke was Monet's firstborn, but more importantly, he always has been Monet's exit strategy out the game and Lorenzo wasn't wrong here. You brought Zeke here. You, you put him in the middle of this life, and you didn't prepare him. Sometimes the truth definitely hurts, and some people would rather hear a sugar-coated lie because then they don't have to take full responsibility of their actions. And in this case, Monet definitely deserves a fair share of the blame. And so I'm glad Lorenzo definitely said this to Monet. So the writers really did a great job at highlighting this in the midst of all this anger and emotion. The humanization of Lorenzo was one of the best moments of episode 5, and in fact, throughout season 3, all Lorenzo has proved is he does everything to protect his family. Just like he said in season 2, he would never live off another man because he believes it's his duty to protect and lead. Now in season 3, Moni did make it clear that she won't stop until she puts a bullet in the person responsible for killing Zeke, and she's been on a rampage ever since. So with Evelyn refusing to carry out the hit on Lorenzo, Monet turned to Gordo where he said he still holds anger over Uncle Frank. If I had the chance, I'd slit the throat of the motherfucker who killed my father. Now prior to this, Evelyn saw right through Monet's game plan that she was trying to play. And if you've noticed, there only seems to be a bit of tension between the two when they're in the same room. So Evelyn made a point of how she didn't want to lose any more family over revenge. She knows if one of her boys went and killed Lorenzo, it would only make someone like Kane or Drew retaliate, and that's not good for either family. So Monet really was a savage for the way she actually manipulated Gordo into killing Lorenzo. But was it the right move? What happens when and if the family find out Monet was the one who put the hit out on Lorenzo? It's going to tear them apart like we've never seen. And we are yet to see this scene from the official trailer, where Diana says it's always Monet's fault. So let's take a look at the impact it's going to have on each one of these kids. Now we've already spoken a little about Kane and Monet and how he'd use a Zeke secret for leverage but the bonding relationship that he was beginning to build with his father was something we hadn't seen before. Lorenzo pushing Kane out of the way really showed him the meaning of family first and I think Kane will try and make his father proud and continue the lessons he taught around family. 
Lorenzo's death is definitely going to hit Kane hard and I think we're going to see a bit of change in the way he behaves. Now with Drew, there's going to be a few moments in Ghost which have started to eat away at his personal life which has slowly turned his head over to the game. But could Lorenzo's death be the making of a real savage? I do think it's important to understand, Monet's move is going to result in Drew starting a war with the wrong people, the Russians. As with every kill in the streets, people will want revenge and so Drew is going to disobey direct orders from Monet to not do anything reckless and I don't think Monet realises what she's just started or the monster that she's unleashing in Drew. Drew will attack the Russians and the Russians will attack the Tahadas at Lorenzo's funeral and unfortunately this will only result in more casualties but that's not all. The man who killed Lorenzo is the same man who's in Drew's bed and when Drew finds out, I hope he doesn't hesitate the way he did with Ev because Gorda has to be taken care of and this is the rift that Evelyn wanted to avoid. She wanted to avoid losing her boys but I think it's inevitable that the Castillos will either be wiped out or we'll at least see a few more deaths which will continue to make season 3 the bloodiest season yet. Now what about Diana? This is the season where she's been on the outs when it comes to her family because of her actions in season 2 and she made a point of how she wants to forge her own path that's separate from the game and Lorenzo definitely recognised that and he told her she's going to be the first Tohada to graduate from college and look how happy she was. In season 2 she thought she was bringing together her family when she helped Lorenzo be released from prison and so Lorenzo's death will definitely hurt and I'd go as far as saying let's not be surprised if Diana turns out to be the most savage out the lot. She's already showing signs of how she's similar to Monet and Lorenzo's death will only make Diana turn even further when she starts to blame Monet. Wait, witness file. I got rid of that shit. I don't want anyone to ever even know I had it. I want this all behind me. Now another aspect I do think we have to discuss is did Monet really get rid of the file they stole from Detective Whitman? Lorenzo said that Monet never shows her hand and she's already lied to Diana by telling her they were only going to get Whitman arrested. She also lied to Davis by telling him she jumped the gun with Lorenzo's fingerprints. So if she still does have the file hidden away in her house then she is in big big trouble. Cooper Sachs also found the stolen file in Davis's drawer and he's given that information to Jenny and they have to assume that he would have fed that information to Monet. So this is where we bring it to one of the scenes that we saw prior to season 3, the Tahada's house being raided by law enforcement. So could Monet go down for this Rico? Because she's already linked to a hell of a lot of bodies and now she can add Lorenzo to the list. At some stage surely she's going to make a mistake and law enforcement will pounce because in my opinion there are way too many bodies linked to Monet. So I stick by my theory I made during the power off season. I still think we might see Monet in an orange jumpsuit come the end of season 3. So drop all your thoughts down below and let me know how you see this playing out and will Monet suffer some consequences? I definitely think she deserves to and who knows, maybe when Nomar finds out it was Monet who killed Mecca, maybe she'll give her what she deserves because she did make it clear in episode 5, she's still searching for his killer. But drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section and as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.